Every year the Lady of the Lake undergoes a warrant and this annual event attracts the attention of curious locals as she circles the Frankton Arm and gets hauled up into the dry docking workshop in Calvin Grove. Being 105 years of age, it begs the question, what needs to be done? We're about to catch up with Chief Engineer Pete Dorrington to uh, look under the hood, so to speak. The, the process is that the, the, the carriage is lowered into the water, so it's fully submerged, and the, the vessel steamed around from the steamer wall. We have divers who confirm that it's exactly above the carriage, and we've got steel cables that connect the carriage to the vessel. To bring the vessel up, there has to be some sort of motive power, and um, normally that would be done with an electric winch, um, but because this has been here so long, they have a inside um, chair, there is a steam engine that drives the winch. And that's actually, that's a super cool place, so you get picked to take you on there. There were many steamers on Lake Rokotuku before the incident. <laughs> the other boats. Mm. And uh, so this is just the last one. She's the, the newest of the old. So one of the predecessors um, had served its life. It was built in 1869, called the Antrim. Yeah. And um, when it ended its service life, um, its engines were taken out and installed in here. Yeah, the, the silver thing over there, that's the boiler that provides the steam. These are the cylinders here that drive the crank which winches the cable. Okay. This was state-of-the-art um, uh, technology in 1912. By our status today, it's very basic engineering. But on the other hand, you're dealing with uh, types of engineering that um, people just don't have the knowledge of anymore. It's, it's pretty much a, a work site. Everything's taken apart now. If you come around the other side, you'll see some more interest. These, these are all parts of the main engine. Of the main engine? Yeah. Did it come with a manual? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you yeah. need to like get things specifically uh, made if well, you're missing well, a part? Oh, absolutely. Come on. Come on, come on through. Come on through. It's and a mate. work site. You don't stress that you can't buy some new parts because even when it was new, you couldn't buy a new one of those. If you wanted a new one of those, they would have made it. You know, so... Right. And although this is year old technology so we still have the machines and the technology that can make any one of those for years it's so mm. cultural yeah. yeah polishing polishing and cleaning and just doing sort of maintenance these are part of the fabrication system what kind of pressure does the team have to undergo in terms of deadline to get this Ernstall um, you know lake ready um, there is a there, there's a well planned um, you know sequence of tasks Mm. that we will complete over the five weeks. I'm part of the painting team this year. The painting team? Yeah. The operation is so important to the Real Journeys uh, activity as a whole that it can only really be spent for, them for a minimum amount of time and that is barely enough time to do uh, the most essential maintenance. Mm. If it didn't have its maintenance, what would be the life expectancy? <laughs> that, that's a difficult question, um, but it wouldn't last long. There's mainly two aspects to giving it a long life, and one is the uh, the structure of the hull, and then there's the work on the machinery. So if you ignore the machinery, it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't last a year. But it's fun looking after something that's a historic, historic piece of equipment. Oh, look at that. Oh, bye. <laughs> this was LWB TV's curious look into the dry docking of the TSS Earnslaw. Kakete a popo, this is Lauren Prebo out. Is that what you're showing the pole? Those are the main engine pillars. <laughs> See what I've got to deal with, Daniel? You've got no idea. <laughs> What? <laughs>